So in um, projectile motion, what we're generally expected to do is we're expected to um, derive the set of equations. Yeah. So um, these are kind of results, um, but unless they give it to you in an exam, we're not allowed to use them. Commonly, they will give you some of the equations, um, but you are expected to derive them. So that's really important. Make sure we are able to derive these. Yeah. So how do we start off? First thing we want to know is that um, we have a situation which describes the initial velocity. So if we think about a projectile being launched, um, there's always an initial velocity that's kind of involved here. So if I think about my movement of a particle, I have these horizontal and these vertical components. And we can treat these separately in the topic of projectile motion, right? So we have our horizontal. And, and with velocity, we're going to adopt uh, Newton's kind of notation here, because anytime we work with motion, we generally uh, use the x dot notation. This just means the first derivative. And this is our um, vertical velocity as well, right? So this is the situation we've got. We've got a horizontal velocity. We've got a vertical velocity. And the first derivative is because they'll be the derivatives of your displacement functions, right? And then when we combine them, we create this uh, velocity, right? We have this horizontal component, a vertical component, and then together we have this velocity over here. What we want to try and do, though, is like we did last lesson, represent this in this kind of polar form. We want to represent it in terms of the angle theta and in terms of its magnitude v, right? That's what we're kind of thinking about. So how can I do that here? If I have these components, what would these be in terms of their respective um, v and thetas? Well, we think about your ratios, right? How can I involve these two sides using this angle here? What ratio do I need to use? Um, A trig ratio, you're correct. Um, Let's go specific. Cos, adjacent of hypotenuse, right? So cos theta is equal to x dot over v. And then we can write x dot as v cos theta. And similarly over here, if you want to move the y dot over here so you can see it as sine, right? But we have opposite of hypotenuse because this is like the same height, right? So we've got sine theta is equal to y dot over v. And so y dot will equal to v sine theta. So the important thing to note here, right, is we're talking about initial velocity. So this is when t is equal to zero, right? So that's something important to keep in mind. The other thing is that um, because we now have a horizontal and vertical component, what I can do is I can combine this as a single vector, right? So remember your horizontal components, if you think back to your vector notation, we usually use the... Uh, we have a few different forms, right? But well, we have something called the component form. And the component form is what we'll commonly use here. So um, if I have this vector, my velocity vector, I can write this as, OK, what's my horizontal component? What's well, v cos theta? And I'll say, that's my horizontal component. So it's a big I, sorry? It's a capital V. Yeah, that's right. Plus v, uh, it's my vertical component, v sine theta j, right? So this is our initial velocity vector at t equals to zero, I can always write any kind of projectile motion situation. I can always write the initial velocity in this way. And they'll generally give you these, or sometimes they may even ask you to find them. Okay, so that's our uh, initial velocity. That's the first thing we're looking at. The expectation is that we are able to derive these set of equations, right? And so, like I said, we can have Cartesian equations and we can have the vector equations. So the ones um, that you may find from old HSC papers, in this, they'll all be Cartesian. That was kind of in the old course. The focus now is on these vector equations. So I want to show you that first before I move on, right? So we have our, our acceleration vector A, yeah? And it's going to have two components. It's going to have a horizontal and vertical component. Now I said, remember, the vertical component, that's our, like, uh, if we're thinking about what kind of quantity gravity is, what kind of quantity is that? That's our, what did we decide that was? So 9.8, and what kind of quantity is it like? This is L. Oh, constant. It's a constant, yeah. Meters per second. second. So this is x. This is our velocity. So this is our yeah, it's our acceleration. So, so gravity is 9.8 roughly. It would sometimes it'll be 10 depending on the question. They'll get they'll tell you which one to use. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, no, because in our equation here, we use negative g is what's commonly done, yeah? And the x component, now remember how I said that there's no air resistance or anything like that's all ignored? So the equivalent mathematical statement for that is that this is just equal to zero, okay? We got to the situation where we have these horizontal and vertical kind of uh, components, right? So yeah. we've got the vertical is negative g, so that's the gravity, and we've got x is your um, zero because we don't consider air resistance like that, right? In a vector form, though, if you think about it, right, how do we write vectors right, in these component forms? Well, go back to this one. We had two components, the i and j. What did they represent? Imaginary. Imaginary. Just trying to be cheeky with the complex numbers. i and j. What kind of components were they? Yeah, your horizontal and vertical, right? So we've got our horizontal zero i plus negative g j, right? Sorry, we can just simplify that as, sorry, it should be negative g j. Uh, we can just write that as negative g j, right? That's your acceleration vector equation. Can you write that down for me? So that's the acceleration, right? What about velocity? Now, what did we say before about these kind of ladders of derivatives, right? We start off with displacement, you take the derivative, you get velocity, you take the derivative, you get acceleration. How do I get back to, from acceleration, how do I get back to the velocity? Integration, integration right. So the important thing to note is this is the initial velocity. This is not the velocity vector that I'm about to find. So they're, they're slightly different, okay? There needs to be a distinction that's made, right? This is gonna be a general velocity equation I'm about to find. This one's only for the initial part. So to do that, I need to find the integra integral of a, yeah? And like I said, these equations, they're actually in terms of t, your time, right? Um, this one, there's nothing in terms of time because, well, it's just a constant value. It doesn't depend on um, where the particle is. We always assume it's constant, right? But once I start integrating, some interesting things start happening. Because if I want to integrate this, okay, and you want to think about integrating this, how do you kind of integrate this vector? Well. If we look at these kind of uh, horizontal and vertical components, we can kind of think about the integral separately. So I can look at the integral of negative g j, yeah, with respect to time. <laughs> with your constant, yeah, plus c, right? The c in this case, it's not just going to be a constant value, right? It's actually going to be a c vector in some sense, if that makes sense, right? Because if you integrate this, um, what is this? Well, this is the variable here, right? These are all constants. And this is just like, you can think of the vector as like a unit almost, right? So this is going to become negative g t, right? Because the variable is t. There's no variables here at the moment. g is just a constant. And so I've got this situation. Now the constant, like I said before, that we have to add on, right? It's not just a number now. It's actually going to be a vector. So when I'm thinking about this, I still actually need to find this to get my velocity equation. How can I do that? I need to use some initial conditions. That's how we evaluate constants. Do I have any information going on over here, right? Do I have any other initial conditions? And it's not immediately clear, but you do, right? What's the um, initial velocity? When does that occur? T equals zero. That's right, Harry. So at t equals to zero, oh, you are. At t equals to zero, we can actually evaluate the constant because this is going to be your velocity vector. I should have made that clear. This is the velocity vector, right? So the velocity vector is going to be, okay, at t equals to zero, I'm going to get negative g times 0 j plus, now what's my um, constant vector? Well, at t equals to 0, right, we know that our vector v is equal, actually equal to this, right? So I can replace this now with this expression here. Does that make sense? Right? So at t equals to 0, this is what the vector will be equal to. This is the only situation when I can use this, right? At t equals to 0. So I have to have that condition here. So v cos theta i plus v sine theta j is equal to, well that just becomes zero plus your c, your constant vector. I don't know if you should call it that, but like your, your vector c, I guess. Um, and so that's what c is equal to, right? c is equal to this. And so that gives me now my general kind of equation here. So let's rub all this out. So what I can say is then, um, I'll go back to this over here, so I've got v now is equal to negative g t j plus your c uh, vector, which is this one, v cos theta plus v sine theta. All right? Now you notice that here there's two j vectors, right? 
So what I can do is I can kind of like group them together, like factorize them on this. And that gives us our general vector equation. So I've got v cos theta i plus, uh, how do they write this? Oh, they do it the other way around. So they, they put the negative gt first plus v sine theta. My mom said hi. Jay. Oh, hi, Catherine. Right. There we go. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Are you missing anything? Yeah. What? Nothing. So we've got our acceleration vector equation. We've got our velocity, yeah. distance, or displacement. displacement. Right. So we're looking for the displacement now, right? So here's what we do. We know that we, um, like before, right, what's the operation we're going to have to do for both of these? In order to get to the displacement, we have twice. Two different v's. Right. So remember how I said like it, it's kind of why they're two different v's. That first v that I showed you, that's only the initial velocity. That only occurs at at t equals zero. This one is our general one because see, this one's in terms of t now. Yeah. yeah? So that's um, the important decision made. But we needed that initial one in order to actually get an expression for this one. Yeah. Well, what operation do I need to do with this vector equation in order to get my displacement vector equation? Think about your ladders, right? Well, how did we get from the acceleration to the vector equation? We're, it's integration. So how long do we get from velocity to the displacement? With integration, right? Yeah, so um, our, our displacement vector, we can call, generally call that S, right, for displacement. Um, uh, I think these are all lowercase, yeah. So what I can do with this is I can say, all right, it's the integral of my vector. In terms, again, with respect to time, that's the variable that's going on here. So, sorry, yeah. So, initial big B. Um, yeah, I think so, just to make that distinction. Yeah. So then we've got V cos theta i plus, now there's a lot of different variables and stuff going on here, so let's just be careful. All right. With respect to time. Yep. Okay, so. How do we go about integrating this? Um, we can treat these as separate terms, right? Anywhere where there's a t variable, right? Anywhere that, where there's a t variable, we treat that as like how you integrate normally. What about something like this though? What kind of value is this? If you think about it, v cos theta, if you put in as a number as v and you put in an angle as theta, because remember that's what these represent, the like velocities and like launch angles, right? What kind of quantity is this? If you put it in your calculator. Yeah, you just get a number, it's constant. So if I'm integrating this, what am I going to get? Well, what happens when I integrate a constant? Like, what happens oh, when I integrate 5? Oh, integrate, sorry, 5x. Five, yeah, 5x five or 5t, five right? So over here, the same thing happens, right? Can you see that? This will just become, even though it looks like there's all these variables here, right? Um, the, the variable that, that's why this dt notation is important. You're integrating with respect to t. So it would be vt cos theta i, that's your horizontal component. And then your vertical component, think about what's going on here. What's this going to become? Well, this is your t variable, so now integrating. Add 1 to the power, becomes t squared. What well, goes in the denominator there? 2. 2. And then same thing here, what do we have going on here? This is just v sine theta. Multiplied by t. Yeah, that's right. So we get vt multiplied by t, think about it like that. vt sine theta j plus d. OK. How are we going with that? Oh, yeah, so we need it because we've already used C here, right? Okay. Uh, we're almost there. Now, I guess the question is how do we talk about, um, how do we find this uh, other vector that, like, that we need to add on to it? Um, the way that we do that is we kind of, we don't have any initial conditions, right? Like before we knew that the initial ve velocity vector, but now we don't really know anything about this displacement. So what we do is we let, at the point of origin, right, at t equals to zero, we let it be at the origin. So what I mean by that is I'm saying, okay, at the beginning, at t equals to zero, initially, um, the x component of my displacement is zero, and the y component of my displacement is zero. So I'm going to say that the displacement is equal to zero, okay? So um, what that means is like, think about when you're launching something off, right? If you're launching something off, generally we'll say that this is like the origin, right? Uh, what you may be wondering is, hey, what if we start it in a different position or something like that? Uh, we still apply this, but we just kind of 
adjust the calculations later on. Yeah. So this is so we can get a general type of equation. So we say that at t equals zero, all these vertical and horizontal parts are going to be equal to zero as well. Okay. So what I can do now is, all right, so if I have that then, that means the displacement, zero, is going to equal to, well, look at all these t variables, right? What's going to happen here? Zero. They're all going to become zero. So it's just going to be zero plus d. And so d is just going to be equal to zero. zero. Right. So zero. So zero. So zero equals zero. And so our displacement vector can be written like that. And that's our displacement vector. Is that in stuff in here? Hey. Cool. Any questions on that one? No. No. Awesome. All right. So that's uh, the deriving the projection motion questions. Next lesson, we'll look at um, solving some problems.